fiction, science fiction, horror, fantasy, crime, LGBT, thriller. You have now entered the house of mystery. With your hosts, Eric Shapiro, David North Martino. John Copenhaver and Al Warren. Heard on KCB 106.5 FM Los Angeles. 102.3 FM Riverside. And 1050 AM Palm Springs. Welcome back into the House of Mystery. I'm Al Warren. No co-host today. It's all quiet because we're doing the uh, week of Thanksgiving USA. So hopefully everyone's having uh, good good battles before they're prepping the turkey and then more battles when they eat the turkey tomorrow. <laughs> That's how it works. So a uh, special guest today, excellent guest, lots of experience and some great writing here. So uh, Mr. Dan Flanagan, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Well, Dan, I, you know, I was kind of going over your history and um, – Wow. Um, I, I find it's interesting, not only because it's interesting, but you've also um, incorporated it into your writing as well. It's, very, it's a very big part of your writing in your books. So uh, let's talk about some of that, some of that history of where you got started before we get into the, to the writing part of it. Uh, um, you started in with, um, I guess, being a lawyer somewhere down the line. Let's so maybe tell tell the listeners who you are and how you got there. Yes, I I, I am still a lawyer, still uh, sitting in my law office right now. Uh, but uh, I wanted to be a writer from the time I was a sophomore in high school. Uh, but uh, and throughout my life, really felt pretty frustrated not doing it. And uh, here, though, uh, af- after many years, I end up being able to do it at a time when I don't have to starve to death doing it and so on. So uh, things worked out better than I deserved in that regard. I uh, uh, and, and, you know, it, it, it's hard to have anything to, to write when you're a kid uh, anyway. Uh, and uh, so I, I uh, ended up. Uh, in graduate school, I uh, got a PhD in history and, and uh, a law degree at the same time, and uh, uh, taught for a couple of years at the University of Virginia. This is ancient history, uh, um, and and but then ended up uh, was a civil rights lawyer for a few years, and then ultimately uh, went into private practice and spent you know thirty years there, uh, it, and. Uh, but but always with a level of of frustration. Not always, at least till you know till thirty age thirty five, uh, a level of frustration for not doing in quotes what I was supposed to be doing. Uh, but uh, and then complicated, and I, I have no problem uh, talking about this since I've been uh, sober now for forty years. Complicated by alcoholism and. Uh, at age 35, uh, I, I got sober and, and took uh, some time off. And, and it, it was an incredible period of time because I opened it with my wife, a treatment center in, in Arizona, wrote several plays, several short stories, wrote, wrote a novel, uh, and so on. I ended up, you know, back in the practice of law with a different attitude about it. But then, uh, in the last few years have been able to, uh, get serious about writing and have published five books since 2018. Well, yeah, but it's, it's interesting that, um, when you were opening up the, um, addiction treatment center and you were having those issues that you went to writing. So is, is, is writing something that, you had always gone to or done, even if it's just for yourself, 
um, as a way of coping with things? Not really. I just felt it was my vocation and mission of, in life from a very young age and uh, caused myself a lot of pain and my wife a lot of pain, too, uh, uh, just being frustrated for having not done it. So all of a sudden, I had this period of time uh, partially enforced, but but uh, uh, but also just took time away from everything, and uh, and and just started writing. It, and when you say you know frustrated for not not doing it, did you think there was something bad if you wrote? It, like it was a bad thing to be focusing on writing? No, I think I was afraid. Number one uh, of failure. Uh, two, I'm not sure I had all that much to write about uh, back then. And, uh, uh, and it just seemed like uh, I just didn't know where to start, where to enter, you know, how to do it, how to deal with it. And it just was simpler to, to you know, go make a living, be a lawyer and live, live practically. <laughs> go get a steady job, be a lawyer. There's lots of lots of crime out there. So now what's the type of lawyer that you are practicing in when you started writing? Uh, I have basically been, I, I was a civil rights lawyer for a few years, uh, but in, in private practice, which has been most of my life, I've been a, a finance, uh, and, and that included bankruptcy uh, lawyer, a lot of banking work and, and uh, debtor creditor work and so on. So in that, in that position over decades now, I've really been involved in lots of uh, scam schemes and scandals, not, hopefully not perpetrated by me, but, but uh, just uh, dealing with the fallout on the legal side. Yeah, that's all part of the American life. Now, and I'm, I'm guessing that this is probably why you center your books, this book series with this detective or this main character um, in the 1980s. Uh, it's it's a little more complicated than that. The and during this period in the mid '80s, when I you know did this treatment center, you know, and the plays, so on, I I wrote the first draft of the first book in the series back then, and uh, got an agent, got a publisher. Uh, of course, what happened is that the uh, publisher went bankrupt, et cetera, and uh, all very frustrating experience, and I just said that this is a crazy world. I, I'll go back to practicing law. Uh, but but then uh, much later kind of pulled that book out of the box and said, you know, this is worth doing. And, and I substantially rewrote it. But so that book was actually written in 1986, and I didn't feel like trying to make it a contemporary type thing. And and then it occurred to me what would be really interesting is to use these characters and sort of tell the history of our times in a way, or at least certain parts of it, through these characters over time and, of course, introducing new characters as it goes along. So uh, as long as I can keep up with it, I'll bring the, this thing up as close to the present day as I can, although the first three books haven't gotten me out of 1988 yet. But. It's a lot that goes on then. <laughs> or was there a, 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 an actual event or thing that happened that made you decide to try to publish the very first time, and when it failed, you actually pulled the book out later and re rewrote and buffed it up and did it again. What what was it that kind of lit the fire under you to actually go and do it and actually put it out there, get it published? My wife died in uh, 2011, and I wanted to do something about her. Uh, not exactly a tribute, but sort of. And, uh, and I wrote a book of poetry. It's called Tenebrae. It's published. Uh, and in the course of that, and I also had our, our law firm has a great thing where they give you a uh, give the partners a a sabbatical uh, that you can take every six years and, and take three months off. So d during that three month period, I was writing on that that uh, book of poetry, 
And and in the course of it, I pulled the book out and said, you know, this really is 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 a, is a good book. <laughs> and uh, and 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 so let let's uh, let's give it a try. And, and so so that that's really what prompted it. And then having a more and more time uh, to do things than, than I had before like that. So it just, uh, it kind of, it, it allowed, it, so it was a spark that allowed me to, to really move forward on all this. So now, now the subject of it, like you decided to kind of follow kind of part of what your career is or use a lot of your own life experience in this. Uh, and this is a uh, part of a series. Now, of course, the, uh, the latest book that we're talking about is on lonesome roads and th- these are this is book three of the peter o'keefe series so let's talk about peter o'keefe and this three book series um what what was your initial idea behind this like what was your thought on when you were creating this series first of all that mint guys is, is the, the inciting incident if you will is the uh uh, it is a mink farm Ponzi scam. Uh, the, and I actually was involved in that as a young lawyer. Uh, it, it, it represented a bank that, that was part of the, 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 the defrauded group. And I assure all the world that, uh, my situation wasn't as interesting as what happens to Peter O'Keefe in the book, but, but it's, it's, it, it gave me, an interesting thing, I thought anyway, to, to write about. I, I just really wanted to write literary fiction, and I, I wanted to write a, a coming of age redemption type story. That was when I myself was sort of late coming of age, and and and, and redemption in the sense of uh, of addiction recovery and so on. So, I, but I thought, you know, instead of just navel gazing sort of thing, I, I want to make it interesting for people. Uh, for, for readers, and so I put it in this detective mystery format. And, and once I finished that, I think I saw how that genre could let me write about some serious things, but do it in a in a more exciting and interesting way for people. You know, why why not make it interesting? Yeah, and and so the 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 main character or Peter O'Keefe. Uh, who is that person, and how did you come up with them? It, it's not me, even though you can't you can't get your you know remove yourself entirely. Although, although I have a lawyer character in it that that uh, this isn't anyone who's read the book. It, it's not flattering when I say this, uh, but I've tried to put more of me in that character so that I wouldn't have my main character be just autobiographical kind of thing. Uh, uh, but but he is uh, he's a Vietnam veteran, uh, substantial you know PTSD type of issues and so on, you know cocaine and alcohol in his background. He's divorced, has eleven year old daughter, and now I I was a Marine. Uh, I didn't go to Vietnam, uh, although came close, and many many of my friends did. I think it was a core thing about my generation's experience and. So I wanted to, to put that in the in, in the character. I wanted to make his work more exciting than a lawyer's life. Uh, so I made him this private detective. And by the way, the, re- the reason he's a private detective is that his lawyer buddy, uh, Mike Harrigan, pulls him out of the gutter and says, I'm going to make a private detective out of you. And... Uh, and, and 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 there's a strong friendship bond between those two uh, run, running through these uh, at least these first three books and probably would continue. So when you when you cre- where did where did he come from in essence for you? Like I, I ask this of a lot of fiction writers, um, is this this is this a character that um, is a combination of other people you've met? Or do you get characters that just come to you in, in your dream, so to speak, or do you create them? And how do you experience these characters when you're putting together a book? Uh, uh, do you, do you, do you have conversations with them? Do you hear voices? Do you see them like a movie? Ask all these questions because I get yeses to a lot of them. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, uh, Peter O'Keefe is not based on uh, on any real person at all. Uh, of, and I tried not to make him based on me. I mean, I have a daughter about that same age. I, I, I never got divorced, et cetera. Uh, but I, I really try to make him somebody on his own and not not uh, not me. Although I had a friend of mine who, during during the pandemic who said. You know, I'm reading this book, and so it's like having you around. You know, so uh, you know I, you can't take you can't take yourself uh, uh, out, out of things necessarily. But and, but in the course of it, I really do try to enter into this other humans. It's not totally unlike me; it's the same age, same generation, similar experience in some ways. Uh, and and but but I try to think. How's this guy gonna gonna think in this situation? And he's in situations where you know, despite the the original thing about the mink farm, uh, I've never you know basically been in. Uh, you know, although you know, there's a big part of the second book, Big Till, that's the SNL scandal and a, and, a, and a trial. I was in all around that thing, but but not not in the same way that that he is. So so uh, I, I really. Uh, I guess I, I I try to think like him, and I sort of do talk to him, although not out loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you're not waking up in the middle of the night with a shovel in your hand or anything, right? <laughs> right. Nothing going on there. Well, yeah. well, it's funny. When you put this together, um, how do you choose which scandals you're going to use throughout the series? Well, the, the mink farm was just – you know, something in my background. I had never heard of anything before that, and I never was involved in anything like it afterward. It was just so exotic and interesting. It was down in the Missouri Ozarks, too, which is an interesting area. And, and uh, uh, so that, that drove that. And, and uh, then, then uh, in all three of the first three books, uh, the mafia is a big, big part of it. And, and of course, in the 80s is when the mafia really was being transformed, and, and in some ways the traditional mafia was dying. And, uh, and so there's a lot of that in there about the struggles within the mafia itself, and he gets in trouble with them. And uh, and a lot of what goes through the first three books is him trying to extricate himself from that. Uh, and then uh, having been involved so much in and around the SNL scandal and and uh, some people I know uh, being, you know, actually criminally prosecuted in that, that situation. Um, I just made that, made that part of it. But then sometimes it'll just be something that grabs a hold of me. Uh, the, the fourth book, which I'm working on now, is not something I was personally involved in but uh, was the uh, satanic panic and uh, daycare uh, witch hunt uh, of the 1980s that produced the McMartin situation uh, and the Kelly Michaels trial in New Jersey and so on. So uh, I'm doing a version of that. I have a notion as I move into the 90s to do something around uh, – right-wing militia stuff. I, I have a notion about doing something about the foster care system, you know, kind of a modern uh, Oliver Twist deal, all within this O'Keefe universe, but uh, so on. So I see those as possible future things, but but uh, I, I don't know till I get there what, what I can make out of them, if I, if I can make enough out of them uh, to, to, to be a good book. Yeah, you're going to have to have... Uh... Geraldo have someone throw a chair at him or something. Right, and, and, and of course, Geraldo, Geraldo was huge in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he rode that one to the bank, and uh, that's what it is. And now, now you're right. So you're taking kind of true events as you're going through this series, things that are are real, like they they really have happened, and then you're fictionalizing. So. At what line do you fictionalize? Is it primarily the characters that are fictionalized and their relationships? Um, do you create a whole new 
type of crime that happened using the same crime that was real in the time or how how do you draw that line like where do you where do you see see it set out i would say that uh, the situations are what was going on in the world the characters are are fictional uh not based on real people uh but people that i can imagine in those situations and the and the fallout from it uh, uh, I mean, for example, and I and I do try to make these realistic in the sense of they all could happen in the real world, and it's not just crazy uh, plot twists and superheroes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I've got a character in this uh, latest book on Lonesome Roads who's a female uh, co-head of the local mafia for a brief period of time, you know, which... Uh, <clears throat> Didn't happen in my city, but 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 uh, might have happened in other places. And that's an example. Of, she she wants to get out of it as fast as she got into it. But but uh, well, how do you tackle then writing the bad guy? How does how do you get into the mind of someone that's bad and doing uh, and doing doing the wrong thing in the story? Well, m- maybe maybe there's that side of it in me. Maybe in most of us. Uh, but uh, again, I just try to project enough, let's call it empathy, in, in, into those people, uh, and try to portray like they think. It. And, and I've I've read I don't know how many books on the mafia, so it it eventually sort of seeps into you, and 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 they're not all just totally vicious monsters either. Uh, they're, they're not, you know, uh, romantic heroes by any means that they're often made into, but, but, but they're more, more complicated often than just brutes. So uh, how do you, how do you, um, describe your books as, as different than let's say what other people are like? Why, why, um, what's different about your thriller? Um, books than what's going on today. Uh, I have a hard time. All I, it's not the first time I've been asked that question. I, I don't know if I know my genre well enough fully answer that that question. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I can only say that I believe they are more realistic than most books in the genre. Not not all by any means. Uh, I think that there's a uh, real personal struggle that this guy goes through and with his family, with his daughter and his ex-wife, and trying to deal with that and sort of uh, make good uh, on the things he screwed up uh, in the past rather than just in, 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 in sort of, as he says, I'm going to become a more useful person uh, in the world. And so, so there's that. So there's that family dom- domestic dy- dynamic to it. It may be a little uh, different that I focus some on the business side of the private detective work uh, and, and and that business and, and, and how he does that. But uh, beyond that, I, I'm not sure whether I'm any different or how. Uh, I, I'm just trying to write what makes sense to me. Yeah, no, it, it sounds it sounds very interesting. Um, oh, and one of the things I was going to talk so you write write about the mafia, and that's interesting. Um, the, the mafia in itself, when you write about them, of course, in your books, I guess you're writing fictional mafia characters, right? You're not taking the real ones. But d- did you ever worry about any sort of a kind of a backlash from mafia if you write them in a negative tone, even if they are not real? Uh, no. <laughs> maybe I should. Maybe I should. <laughs> uh, but I don't. But I, I'll tell you what, they're just not... Pro- First of all, the 80s is a long time ago, right? But most of those guys are dead. Right. Uh, yeah. And uh, and they're not... They just don't have the same power they used to. Uh I really developed that theme in, in the third book on Lonesome Roads. So it's just out. Uh, heck, everything they did has become legal. So it's, you know, it's, it kind of took away their livelihood. That plus Rico plus the wiretaps, there's a, there's a real, uh, 
uh, wiretapping theme uh, and, and you know recording theme in the third third book. Why do you think you know there there? It's almost like uh, Western uh, gang, gangsters, you know, uh, Billy the Kid and all this stuff, and and mafia figures and stuff. They're almost kind of a um, a novelty, a fig, a, it's a favorite of a lot of the audience. Like people root for a lot of those people. Why? Why do you think that is? It, yeah, it, it's uh, to the extent that I think about it, I'm disturbed by it. You know, you you go completely back to Jesse James, who, who was a scoundrel, not, you know, not a good guy. But but over time, over time, those people are romanticized so much. And I think with with the mafia, it, it was also associated with a fascinating ethnic group, uh, primarily, not exclusively, uh, that. Uh, that, that portrayed these family values and so on, that just made them more interesting than everyone else. But the Americans have this thing about uh, uh, outlaws. Uh, uh, they hang them on the one hand and admire them on the other. And I hope, I, I, I don't have any, uh, I try not to romanticize them. I, I don't try to make them the most evil villains in the world, you know, but, 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 uh, I try not to. Well, I mean, you can just write for who who they are and what they do, and yeah, right, that's enough. Yeah. yeah, and let people decide. But I, I just, I'm surprised by it every day that uh, um, how 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 they're idolized. They're almost like mini rock stars, and <laughs> they do bad things. I, I, one, one, yeah, right. One thing I don't do is. Uh, is the Breaking Bad sort of thing, where where the villain remains a villain, and you're supposed to sort of, or the Sopranos thing, and and, and you're supposed to sort of admire them. My my good guys are a little more good guys. They, they might make mistakes, they might do stupid things, uh, they might even do wrong things, but but uh, that it's not noir noir, you know. Everybody's a, Rotten, and you're supposed to come to love them anyway. So when, when so when you're writing, um, what kind of mood do you have to be in, or does the mood affect you at all? Can you just sit down and you've got like uh, the spare time, and you can just turn it on and turn it off when you want? No, it's really hard for me. Uh, I, I say that I write manic depressively, uh, and, and the and, and it'll be. I'll go along and not do anything for a while, and then all of a sudden just really turn it out. Uh, and I, and I can't even fully explain it. I, I do. I have come to stop beating myself up when I'm in sort of a fallow period, uh, and something's going on there. You know, <laughs> uh, uh, I, ideas are coming out that are. That I hope are enhancing the story and everything. That that uh, uh, you know, I don't fully understand what I'm up to, but but it has a good result in the end. I find I have much the same problem, so I can relate to that. And also, when as a lawyer, I've written the deadline my whole life, and all of a sudden, not writing the deadline, you got to you know sit there and generate it, you know, w without any kind of uh, outside uh, pressure. And once you're used to a certain thing, you know, it's hard, a little harder. On the other hand, uh, I, I've written quite a bit in a fairly short period of time. so I'm, I'm, That's part of the manic. When I'm manic, I'm very manic. I yeah. <laughs> I get that. I do that. Um, so when you read th these books, when you've written these books, um, did you – have the idea of let's say all of them ahead of time do you kind of know where it's going to begin middle and end and the main event or do you actually have to kind of work through it as it goes so far i've always known where it's going to end and almost envision the last page and and almost always the last page pretty much is what i originally envisioned uh i but I don't do a super detailed outline. I might have a sketch 
uh, of where it's going. Uh, uh, I, I have, like many writers, the hardest time with the middle. Uh, in terms of how am I going to get to where I need to go here and still make it and, and not get lost and, and still make it interesting and so on. So uh, uh, I do leave myself room uh, for creativity in the process, uh, including plot uh, creativity. At the end of the day, like when someone picks up one of the books and they take it home and read it, um, what do you hope they take away from the book? Mainly people who are by no means perfect, struggling in difficult situations, sometimes self-created, sometimes created outside of them, and uh, dealing with them or coming to terms with them uh, in a realistic and generally positive way. Uh, uh, the, I guess I'll take this opportunity to talk about the themes that in the books uh there uh one of the main themes is abuse of power uh financial power political power prosecutorial power sexual power uh familial power you know every kind you could think of uh, anywhere there's a formal or, or informal hierarchy and someone abusing it uh the the corrosive effect of keeping secrets and telling lies, often lies to cover the secrets. Uh, uh, sorry to get too philosophical here, but searching for a meaning in, a, in an absurd world, but having to stop searching and start living at some point. Uh, how to do what people can to heal the world that's around them. Uh, you know, the, the Hebrew concept of tikkun olam. Uh, all, all hopefully humble enough, <laughs> you know, that, that, that it's not as grandiose as, as it sounds. Uh, but, uh, you know, people with real, I, I have a book of short stories that's not detective, not crime. The, 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 the liner note is uh, people on the verge, you know, and, and uh, trying to come, come to terms with uh, difficult situations. Many of which they've created themselves. Yeah, it's interesting how that is. So you, you kind of you want them to have entertainment, but there's always a little bit of a, a subtext or some sort of a, a theme uh, th throughout. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Very much. Yeah. I I, I hope I'm writing literary fiction that's really just yeah. more interesting yeah. than, than a lot. Oh, that's interesting. So uh, it, now each book does stand alone, or do you have to read them all? Uh, it, 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 they, they do stand alone, or, or they, and certainly they're meant to stand alone, but uh, uh, the, the first three books could be called a trilogy. Uh, I, I, and people have said, it's not just me, yeah, these stand alone. I can read it alone. Uh, but at the same time, one does lead into the others. The, the, the things that have happened in one kind of set up the next one. Uh, that, that won't be true now, the fourth one. But, uh, so, so, uh, you know, I, I hope, I hope reading one makes people want to read the others. But, but, uh, but, but I think you can read each one and get something out of it without. Having read the other. So what do you what what do you like best about writing? Finishing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I uh, and and you know it's turned out. I love revision. It's uh, much more satisfying to me because I've got the I've got the basic sculpture, if you will, there and and, and refining it and trying to really make it really much much better. Is yeah, and so at the same time. What is it that you find the most difficult in the whole process of writing? Uh, two, I, I guess two things. One thing I've been surprised by, I never thought that I would be good at plotting things. Uh, you know, having an exciting plot twists and turns and all that. And other people are telling me that they're there uh, or I wouldn't believe believe it. So, uh, so that I, I, I find that difficult, but apparently that's going pretty well. Uh, what, what I'm most irritated and frustrated by is when I hit a place that is 
is hard or I don't quite believe in it. Uh, and, and, you know, kind of, I, I, I'm trying to learn to power through that better. Uh, and then, then return to it at the end. You know, they always say, you know, do your first draft. It doesn't matter how bad it is. I, I'm not quite there, you know, so, uh, sometimes I need to just, okay, I need to think more about this, uh, of what I'm trying to do here. Do I need to do that or something? Now, now to capture the setting of of the eighties and the and the uh, location and everything and the timing and that, I guess you w- would do a little bit of research to make sure you get all the sayings and the the timing right of things and and uh, capture the whole mood of it. Yeah, and of course I lived through it, so that helps a lot. Uh, but but I I for the period of time of the the, the novel set are in, in, in actual time periods, you know, and uh, I read the news, the local newspaper, uh, for that period of time, you know, uh, every day, uh, you know, on microfilm or whatever, and uh, so so I, so I get that out of it. And then with a lot of it, I have to do specialized research uh, uh, because, you know, well. He, he, you, you, you got into something you didn't really know that much about. You need to find out, uh, you know, like uh, when exactly did emails start being dominant and voicemails, not, you know, that that kind of thing. Uh, when, when did this car, you know, when, when did they start making cheap, uh, cheap Grand Wagoneers versus, you know, something else? That, and, and to get those things right. And I was not a criminal lawyer. And I'm not. So I, luckily I have colleagues that, that, uh, I can get, uh, some help from on that. But my legal life has helped a lot, but, but not, I still have to do a lot of work around, uh, research kind of work around. Yeah. I would say that's probably some of the, the hardest part of it or can take some of the longest time. Yeah. It, it does. And this next, this next book is, is uh, there's going to be a lot of courtroom scenes in it, and courtroom scenes are not easy. Uh, you might think they would be, uh, you know, natural drama and so on. But it's hard to draw the line between what's boring and lawyer stuff that nobody cares about, but also to be realistic. Now, you know, I don't know how many lawyers, I'm certainly one of them, that ruin, ruin everybody around them by saying, oh, that's not true, that ain't going to <laughs> you know, in a court courtroom drama. So, so you're that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, I've been chastised for it too. More than yeah, once. yeah, I can imagine. So, so where do you see yourself going with this? Is this something you want to continue on with this the, the same main character and the same theme style book, and go go for the '90s and the 2000s and even further? Yeah, yes, I do. And, and, uh, I've already introduced new characters as the, uh, you know, in these three. So I think I'll be able to, uh, and, and, uh, in fact, in this third book on Lonesome Roads, his daughter, uh, Kelly, uh, 11 year old has her own kind of subplot mystery kind of detective thing of her own. And, uh, and other characters too. So I, I, uh, I believe I can, you know, make this thing interesting, uh, and, and introduce new people, new plots, and, and so on as time goes on. And then I still plan to do occasional, uh, uh, n- non-crime, non-detective, you know, uh, short story, novella collections, that sort of thing here and there, uh, as I go along. Is that do you, do you feel kind of like a natural short story writer like that? Is that why you do them? I think I might be, but I I I have. It's not like I have you know sixty plots in my head to, to, you know ready to go. So so they're, they're a little harder for me uh, to to get out there. But 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 I'm writing a couple couple right now that uh, that you know the, but that have been spinning around my head for decades. You know. So, so your extra characters and the new ones you bring in, and some of the uh, bad characters are out there. I wonder. So, do you go and uh, you, you know you're out uh, 
at a supermarket and, and, uh, someone buds, buds in line and <laughs> it's really rude. Do you take that person and kill them off in your book? <laughs> no, but, uh, I've got a couple. I, I, I'm going to say that without being real specific, that there's a sportscaster, a pretty famous one <laughs> that I've never liked. And, and I've, uh, and I've named a character I don't like his name. <laughs> and, and have him act, but I don't do that very often. Uh, but but sometimes. I do. <laughs> Why not? So anybody who, anybody who reads on Lonesome Rose can look for that. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. And of course, the, the problem is that I'll offend more people probably than than I'll make happy about that, something like that. So you got to be careful. Yeah, but that's all part of the fun. You know, just taking cheap shots that don't really necessarily help your book. You know, not a good idea. Yeah, it's all sort of the, it's all fun. Um, so now, do you find that you get better with each book? Do you think you become a better writer each time you do? I think I think that has happened. Yeah, uh, I, I really do, and people are telling me that too. Yeah, uh, uh, it's, I, I, it's like anything; the more you do it. And, and put, get yourself out there and, and, and get feedback and all that, uh, you probably get better. And that's kind of a, a, a key thing there. But, uh, you know, a lot of writers go through this. Like, so as you do more and more books and you're getting better, if you don't, don't go back to your first books and read them then. Because <laughs> yes. you'll try to, you'll want to rewrite them. You'll want to correct things and kind of go, oh, no, I should do this. Or I should have done this. I'm just warning you now because I've been there, done that, <laughs> and I know lots that have. So, Yeah, I'm, that is, I'm sure that is excellent advice, and I will very much try to – because you can't get hung up. you got to get keep moving. Well, because you'll never get out of the circle, of the, the vicious circle of going, oh, God, I should have done this. And then if you go and redo it, and I know some authors that have done that, and then it keeps on going. It never, it, it's never going to be satis, satisfactory because you keep on growing. And so I, you kind of have to look at it like, okay, I wrote it for who I was and how, at the quality of writer I was at that time. This was, this was me and it's got to represent that time. And I think that's, you just got to leave it at that. But, but it's something we all face, I think, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You- even now, I'm I'm tinkering with it till the last moment before it's printed. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a tough one, you know. It's a, it's a tough one. Do you do you have a do you have a moment, or do you ever look at a book, or when you're writing something, you're doing something, and you go, "This is good." Is there something that sticks out for you to that makes you feel a, a book or a story is good? I, I, I'd be lying to you if I say that, that didn't happen to me a lot <laughs> in the course of these books. But, but, uh, uh, but I can't think of any specific, yeah, you know, just a feel thing. But, but there's no doubt that, that I go, Hey, I nailed that one. Yeah. You know, or, or usually I hope I'm humble enough to say I nailed it as, as much as I can, as good as I am right now. You know, that, yeah, well, of course. I mean, I guess the, the, the treasure is the idea and the thought and the, and what's written, not about how it can be done better. So, or right. more precise. Yeah, right. Believe me. I, yes. So, you know, you, you were talking about, uh, feedback and stuff like that. Do you, do, do you like to interact with, um, readers or fans or anything like that do you do social media do you have a website what is all your information where people can find dan yeah i uh, yes i have uh uh dan flanagan books it's called and the only thing to know there is flanagan spelled kind of funny it's f-l-a-n-i-g-a-n and uh uh there's a lot of things on that uh about me there there are uh 
I've, I've been around long enough, both as a lawyer and otherwise, and I, you know, lots on my, a lot of pages on Google. And, uh, and, uh, you know, I pay attention to, you know, the, my Amazon page and those kind of things. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not personally, you know, I've got, Social media accounts. I'm not much good at it uh, uh, at really staying up with with things. Uh, interestingly, though, the there's a scene in in the first uh, book, uh, Mink Eyes, that's a Halloween scene uh, with him and his daughter, and kind of a terrifying situation. I actually went on to uh, YouTube and TikTok and read that chapter here a couple three weeks ago. So. So I do a lot of things like that. Uh, uh, well, not as much as I could. But. No, well, doing something's better than nothing, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. I. I it depends on how you read it, too. <laughs> I, I, yeah, that I don't know. <laughs> I doubt it was very good, but it but it wasn't very long. So I said. yeah. Well, TikTok seems to be a hot thing right now, so you know. Well, you know, you try things, you know, you never know what's going to, you know. Well, you don't, you don't. That's what it's all about. But, of course, now we're going to have your website up as well on ours so that people can find you with one click and, 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 uh. And, and the, the three, the, the, all my books, the, uh, the three in the series and the other, the book of poetry and the, and the short fiction are all available, um, on all the, Online retail people, uh, paperback. The, the three, uh, uh, Peter O'Keefe books are on audiobooks, you know, so they're, they're out there in every format. Well, that's great. We need us, uh, older guys, we need the audiobooks. I can't read as much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I've found is, uh, spend a lot of downtime in your car. And those audiobooks come in handy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I think they're great. I'm I'm a fan, I'm a fan. So I so I have to ask now when you're writing, like this last one that's out over the pandemic time, does that sort of affect the way you write? Does that I mean because that sort of thing shut down a lot of writers. A lot of writers were unable to handle the stress or the uh, emotional roller coaster that people were having and all the stuff going on outside of the, you know, outside of your door type thing. And that, uh, did, did that affect you at all in your writing? It, it actually helped me. I, I have to confess. Uh, I was writing the second book, the big tilt at that time. And, uh, uh, it, it, you know, it restricted all the things you could do in the world. <laughs> and so, uh, and so I spent, uh, finishing that book and, and, uh, so in, in in my case, uh, it, it wasn't that bothersome. All that depends on where you are in the world and you know what your responsibilities are and, and that sort of thing. But yeah, well, you could have went to some anti-mask rallies or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take up your time, have some fun. Yeah, no. Yeah, uh, and, and during the, the the pandemic, I I tried to act as much as possible like it wasn't happening. I mean, I I wore a mask and all that, but I have pictures with me and one other guy uh, in the LaGuardia Airport security line. I, I mean, it, 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 there were parts of, there were parts of that that were incredible. I mean, you, yeah. if you were moving around in the world. Yeah, yeah, strange time, I'll tell you. But uh, but it gave me nothing that I want to write about or anything. Right? No, no, but quite often it creates an emotion or a feeling yeah. in someone. Yeah, kind of depressing, yeah. depressing, you know. I mean, yeah. I don't like what happened. I don't like the fact that cities uh, don't have people in them anymore, you know, uh, yeah. in terms yeah. of the remote work and all that. yeah. You see, and that's kind of the feeling that uh, it, that you get it. And as a creative, if you're writing, sometimes that makes you write darker or feel darker than you would normally. And sometimes it shuts people off, and some people go in opposite direction. You know, you just don't know how it's yeah. going to yeah. change what you do when you're doing it because it's not something that comes along every day. <laughs> right. You know? 
you know, but wow. Interesting conversation. Glad you came on the show. Um, now your newest book is, of course, is called On Lonesome Roads. And, uh, our guest has been the author, uh, Dan Flanagan. So thank you for taking the time. Thank you. I really enjoyed it and uh, uh, very much appreciated you having me on. You've been listening to the House of Mystery radio show. To find out more about our guests, hosts, or shows, go to www.houseofmystery.com. Show is over for now. Was it as good for you as it was for me? Yeah. Good night. This is the production of Something Weird Media. I'll be back.